Okay. Hey, why don't you guys get a little bit closer? Love each other. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Jose Juan Vasquez. I go by Joe John Vasquez, and I'm 74, and I was born in San Antonio, Texas. Lauren wants to know, who is your favorite grandchild? I got an answer for that. That's all eight of them. Uh, Eddie wants to know, who is your favorite grandson? So you'd answer it, my favorite grandson is? I don't have a favorite no, grandson. You gotta ask that question. I don't have. You have to say my favorite grandson is. You have to repeat the question. This is what they want. I don't have a favorite oh. grandson. I lost my napkin. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot find it. <laughs> my favorite grandson. Well, for that you have to put an S on sons, grandsons. They're all my favorite. One way or another, for this reason or that reason. Toto wants to know. Ask them who their golden child is. And you can be honest, we know it's all Toto. Everyone yes. knows it's Toto. Okay, grandson. You want to know who it is? It's you, okay? Daniel? My, my uh, golden child is on the Rosé I didn't say I read it, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I found my napkin. I told you, Mommy, you're cheating. Yeah. Tori wants to know. <laughs> um, was, he the golden uh, was he the golden child since first sight? Or was, was there a golden child before him? Yes. Yeah, no, you have to answer. Yes, he's our golden child. Daniel had been our golden child. Who's Joe? The first born. So, Grandpa, I want to know, where's there a hole? Was there a hole? Where is there a hole? In the bottom of the sea. <laughs> There's a hole. There's... Sing it, Grandpa, sing There's it. A hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a log in the hole in the hole in the bottom of the sea. Everybody knows. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole. See, I know that by memory. That's in your head. Where did you guys first meet? We met in California. Sam here. <laughs> Tiffany, why are you spitting? <laughs> okay, seriously, seriously. Okay. We met uh, over there. <laughs> so, we met in San Diego. between you guys, right? That's what you're saying? Yes. yes. Okay. So how, what was your guys' first encounter? Like, how, how was that? The first encounter? Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to school and he was going to work. That's how we would see each other. And was it like love at first sight? Or did you guys build a well, friendship? It was, it was actually love at second sight. <laughs> <laughs> Is that tea yeah. tie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to focus. Tell us how you guys met up until the point where you guys started dating. So from the moment you guys started talking <laughs> to when you guys made it official. About a minute and a half after that, I found love. Well, we just started talking to each other. Yeah. Then he asked me out. And then uh, I said yes, but I had to be in the house by 10 o'clock. 
and we knew each other a month before we got married. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> How did he ask you out? I went. <laughs> this is through the window. Yeah. Is it through the wall? <laughs> the door? Through the wall. <laughs> it was through like that, through that, the code. The code. That, we go out. One night, forget it. No, we we have uh, we had plans for that. I forget. I forgot what they asked. Oh, that's <laughs> How did you ask her out? Oh, I asked her out like um, by the second night, third night, and I asked her if she wanted to go out. And uh, since I had a car, I didn't have to carry a piggyback or anything. So we went out to uh, go get a hamburger. But huh. that time there were 39 cents, so you yeah. could afford it. And I, I could afford it. it. Yeah. And I ordered mine with two patties because there were 39 cents after all. Were you nervous to ask her out, Grandpa? Nah, not at all, Mika. She lived next door. Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw her every day, you know. But uh, no, I wasn't nervous at all. Grandma, were you nervous uh, to go on the first date with Grandpa, honestly? No, but I had to feed my brothers and sisters before. I could go out, and I had to be in the house by 10 o'clock. How was that for you, having to care for all your brothers and sisters? Well, I didn't have any other choice. My mother was working two jobs to take care of us. And Grandpa, what was your living situation when you met Grandma? She obviously had her hands full. Well, um, the only time she could go out is when her mother, my mother-in-law, or your great grandma uh, wasn't working that day or off for the weekend. That's the only time that I could ask her out. She wasn't uh, busy, <coughs> but she was cooking for the kids, her brothers and sisters, and all. With me, uh, I didn't have anybody to take care of except myself. When did you guys know that you guys were in love with each other? Like about, probably about forty-two years. Uh, about forty-two years after. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, let me see, what, what time is it? <laughs> now, we've been married 57 years, and uh, there hasn't been a, a day that uh, I don't remember. You know what I'm saying? Never let him forget. Oh, girl, yes. <laughs> Grandma, when did you know that you were first um, in love with Grandpa? Well, I know he was when he asked me to marry him. You knew you were in love with him the moment he asked you to marry him? Yes. I, I know he was serious. <clears throat> and Grandpa, what, what gave you the courage to ask Grandma to marry you after only one month? Um, when I knew that I could actually take care of her, because uh, I was a hard worker and uh, I had a job then, and I wasn't afraid to go out and get a job and support her. And, uh, that's when I asked her, she said, hey, you're on. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel when you first had um, Auntie Betty? When you found out that you were having your first child? Who are you asking? Both of you. Both of you. Oh, right. <coughs> I, I, was, so I, was, I was glad that I was going to have my first, my first baby. My Betty. Mm -hmm. I had Betty. And then I had Sandy. And I had Joe. And I had Anna. And I have always been a... Well, having, having the first one, Betty, she taught us how to be parents. And, and, uh, and uh, but they have all of them are my babies. No matter how old, even your Uncle Joe, they're all my babies. Including like, my whole family, I always call them my babies, you know. And I'm uh, and, uh, very proud of that. But we shouldn't have been multiplying, and I'm very happy about that. Before we pass away, you know. But uh, with Betty, was uh, very, I guess, very very happy because she was born healthy, you know. And I, it, didn't, it didn't matter if it was a boy or a girl. So from there, was it hard for you guys in the beginning to start a family? Hard for us? No, with my my. Uh, uh, Willingness, I guess, to work any place that, uh, that it didn't matter because I was gonna.
take care of the family one way or another, you know, no matter what kind of job I had or how many jobs I had. I was going to take care of my family. I've always had that. My parents taught me that. With your four kids, if, may, if you can say one thing about them, what would it be? The first thing that you would say to Auntie Betty, what would it be? What's the first thing that crosses your guys' mind? We would t I would say to my, to my Betty, I am very proud of her and what she has become and what she's done with her children and her marriage and she's still going on and and then we love her. The same thing with Sandy. She's always there. She has always done her best with her family, her <laughs> girls, her grandchildren, her husband, and we're proud of her, very, very proud of her. The same thing with my son. He's always been there, and there's no question about it that, I mean, I could always count on them. And with Anna, the same thing. She worked, she done her house, she takes care of her children, and now her grandson, and it means a lot to us, for me to know that they have become the, the kind of, of um, children that I want, and I'm very proud of all four of them, and proud of my eight grandchildren, and now my 10, now going on 11 great grandchildren, I am proud of my family, very proud. Amen. For my part, uh, to me, uh, I've always <coughs> said I love them, all four of them. Whether every time they call, it's a, the last thing I say is I love you, goodbye, thank you for calling. But I put them all on the pedestal, and uh, for different reasons, and uh, all four of them are my babies. You know, even though Anna's the, the, the youngest, they're still all my babies. And they have always treated us the same way, like we want to be treated. And that's four that any any family would, would love to have, my four kids. Okay. So you guys have built such a strong family. What is the key to that? What is your guys' secret? My secret is that uh, neither one of them wanted custody of the kids. <laughs> no, the, our secret is uh, I guess we're still learning a lot about each other and we learn whatever the kids want to tell us, our, you know, our siblings want to tell us and we're happy to hear about whatever they're doing, whenever they do it and, 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 and uh, that's one way that keeps us together to learn more about each other. You know, so, and I know that your grandma and I are welcoming any home that they will take care of us. Especially if I pass away, I know they will take care of your grandma. And I could ask any one of the four, and they would be more than happy, you know. So that, that makes me at least go in peace, you know, so. What is your fa most favorite quality about grandma? And grandma, what is your favorite quality about grandpa? My, my favorite thing about her is she's always been there uh, for me and with me. That's why my favorite song is Through the Years by Kenny Rogers. And if you listen to that song, I would I would go ahead and, and uh, dedicate that song to her. And we I mean every word of it. She's always there, always listens. There's been arguments back and forth and all that, but then again, we always say good night or love you or whatever. And uh, before we go to bed. Same thing with me. I can always count on your grandpa. It's always there. He always asks me what I need, what do I want. We go to the market, what do you need, what do you want. The same thing over and over again. But he's always there for me. And when we fight like everybody else, believe me. But we always end up in the same bed. We just say good night. Yeah. And, you know, we always do that. No matter if we be mad with each other or what. If you guys could go back and do one thing different, what do you think that would be? I'd be in Jamaica maybe. <laughs> or maybe Bermuda. <laughs> Timing of your children, anything like your job? No. Anything 
affect the other? No, we, we would, I don't think I would change anything at all because everything has been falling in place throughout 57 years. Then there's nothing we regret as far as, well, our kids are in drugs or this and that. No, they're perfect kids right now. And, and they will have always been, they will always will, you know. And then when I got married, I started with my own family. So I already knew more or less how to be a mother. But my children for me, She was just uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing for me. It's my like my, my children because believe me, there's nothing like your children and not my grandchildren. And I'm proud of all of them, every single one of them. So my life has changed a lot. So what has changed for you guys or what it, what was your guys' biggest goal when you guys were growing up that you guys knew that you guys wanted to accomplish in your life? Well, you know what though, that uh, with me, my dad was in aerospace. So to me, that's the only thing I knew at that time. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to grow up like my dad and uh, work in a professional field in aircraft. And uh, by golly, it turned out like I worked 31, 32 years in aircraft. As for me, I didn't have no goals. At that time, I didn't think about it or anything. All I wanted to do was take care of my brothers and sisters. And then I got married and I didn't have no goals after that. It was just raising my children. That was the main thing for me. Did you plan on having kids or did it just happen? It just happened. You have three cell laws. One, two, and three. And what's best? Can you put it in sequence? Oh my gosh, sequence? of course. <laughs> oh, which is the best put it in one? Sequence. Which is the best one? Yeah. Well, I'll tell, tell you this way. I call them so close. <laughs> we see them, how they take care of their wives. And their wives just so happen to be my daughters. You know, and uh, they treat them well. Like I tell Grandpa here. I'm not worried what my son-in-laws are going to do to my daughters. I'm worried what my daughters are going to do to my son-in-laws. <laughs> okay, I was texting my Nino and he, first of all, he says, tomorrow's mom's day. I love my mommy. And then he said, my mom is my treasure and heart and my dad is my hero. And then he asked, how has being, has been being married so young helped them last for so many years. Wait, uh, first of all, we want to hear what age did you guys get married? Oh, we got married. I was 16 years old when I got married. And I was 17. And uh, we were actually seven months apart. And we got married March 4th, 1961. I think that both of us being that young, we didn't have any bad ideas or or habits, so it was like us, like being born then all over again as far as getting married so young. We didn't have any bad habits, in other words, and that's what made us uh, stronger and last longer because there was a lot to know about each other that we didn't know enough about ourselves. So you know? I, I have to ask, how did you guys feel finding out that there was going to be a set of twins in the family? Uh, we, we knew it was going to happen one time or another because twins run heavy on your grandma's side and on my side. It's, it's like a, one trophy for both of you instead of two different trophies, you know, so. You know. And for me, it was very happy because I went with Sandy to the doctor when they told her, she was gonna have twins. And somebody asked me, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yeah. I asked your father, well, you should know how it happened. <laughs> when you get married, you have to share your banana split. That's hard and head for me when I love dessert. <laughs>
go shopping for groceries, we have two baskets. I'll get all the fun stuff, the ice cream and cokes and all that, and you know, and she gets all this serious stuff like celery and onions. <laughs> <laughs> makes it very proud to be your uh, grandparents. When I pass away, uh, you'll find me with a smile on my face that I'll be happy that I have raised a beautiful family. Thank you very much for this video you put, you put together and, uh, and I hope this video helps. Uh, in the future to see how we, we live, we have lived. And I love every one of you. Thank you very much. And, and, uh, Me I'm, too, Sandy, but can I have a piece of that cake now? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Grandma wants that cake. <laughs> mm, my baby.